Brian Johnson's Blueprint, A Spiritual Perspective. That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachiak Takamiya. I am the author of Ikigai Biohacking. Okay, so do you know Brian Johnson and Blueprint? So he is an entrepreneur and he spends about $2 million each year to experiment on himself, like his body and try to improve his health and longevity. So he kind of optimizes his exercise, his diet, his supplement intake, and, and he uses all kinds of gadgets and machines to you know, optimize his practice. And he has a group of you know, doctors, you know, working uh, with him to check, to measure everything, you know, you know, all the kind of a personal physical uh, data, right? So he's a basically a biohacker, right? Now, so uh, recently someone asked, asked me what I think of Brian Johnson and his approach, right? So today I decided to make a video uh, about it. But first of all, I mean, I still don't know enough about Brian Johnson. I've watched several videos about him, including some of the video which are made by himself too. Yeah, yet, you know, because there's so many aspects and one cannot really, you know, understand the whole picture. So, you know, I may be wrong. Yeah, that's something I have to say in the beginning. Yeah. And also, um, I believe in diversity, you know, just like in the tropical forest, you know, you have all kinds of species living there, all kinds of plants, and every plant is a valuable. So every lifestyle, every experience is valuable in a sense. So I mean, it's not my place to make a judgment on anyone's lifestyle. Yeah. So, and, and generally speaking, I think, uh, you know, his lifestyle is great. He also, he's kind of improving his health and longevity, and he's kind of a conducting experiment, yeah, on human body, yeah, and he's uh, releasing all the data, so which can be applied by other people, so he's sort of uh, helping uh, people, you know, because we don't have all the, that kind of money, so we cannot afford to use all kind of machines and everything, but so he's doing it for others in a way, and then releasing the data so other people can apply. So just, you know, what is the optimal exercise, what is the optimal diet, you know, what is the optimal way of taking supplement, you know, what is the optimal way of sleeping and so on. So in, in a sense, that is good. And also, so he is trying to kind of discover uh, a potential of a humanity. And then by doing so, maybe, you know, exploring an ideal society or better society, because he's not only working on his body, he's working on his mind too, you know, how to calm his mind and how to, you know, constantly stay peaceful and so on. And if everybody, develop that kind of mental state then there will be a peaceful world there won't be conflict and wars anymore yeah so i think generally speaking he has a good intention right okay so um so today not so much about brian johnson himself and you know what he does but more like a, a, a lifestyle, as a lifestyle, because now many people are following this lifestyle. It has become a kind of trend, right? And and this is not only the blueprint lifestyle, but you know, other people doing similar type of thing. And an entire field is called transhumanism or even biohacking, right? So what is the difference between transhumanism and biohacking? So I once made this kind of chart, right? So biohacking has so many different, you know, aspects. Yeah, some of the approaches are very natural, such as intermittent fasting, exercises, diet, sauna, cold plunge, sleep. Yeah, and some of them are more uh, biotech biotechnological. Yeah, uh, such as you know supplements, stem cell therapy, DNA tests to you know microchip implant to blood transfusion and so on. So for transhumanism is more these side, like using a lot of technology. Yeah, well, biohacking kind of includes everything. 
in the case of Brian Johnson, I think he does everything too. Yeah. And then I, I once said that in the Ikigai biohacking, we focus on those natural approaches and we don't do any of those things. And then the these supplements and stuff are kind of somewhere in between the middle. So I'm not against them, but I don't do them so much, right? Okay, so the question is, is it blasphemy? Yeah, because in a way you are challenging the divine blueprint. If there is a divine blueprint, yeah, you're making your own blue, own, you're making your own blueprint. you the human being is, you know, creating your own blueprint and altering the cells and altering your biology. So, you know, is it blasphemy against God or a divine, you know, being and, and so on? That can be one interpretation, yeah? But also there's another interpretation that this is a liberation from the matrix, yeah? If, like the old religions, you know, were the matrix, we're kind of trapped. We're trapped in that divine blueprint or the you know divine design yeah so we are kicked out of eden and, and then we have we become mortal and we have a this body which is limited so by discovering way to optimize our physical function and we can expand our lifespan and we can even become immortal in a sense we're not trapped in this matrix and then we'll be free, we'll be independent from it. So that is one interpretation too, right? Now, um, when I think about biohacking, yeah, I often re re think, think about new age. Do you know about new age? So there was a new age movement back in 1980s and that was also, you know, born in California, actually. And then, so the people, you know, were interested in crystals and meditation, yoga, and they are using all kind of psychotherapeutic, you know, techniques and breathing techniques to basically expand their consciousness. Their main focus was more mind and consciousness, not so much on your body, but uh, the atmosphere was similar because... There are a lot of it's a kind of new trend really, and then people are so excited about the new new meditation technique and new you know breathing technique and so on. Yeah, and in the same way, at today's biohacking movement, that people are excited about this new sleep hack and new you know fasting hack and and so on. Yeah, but one one difference is uh, biohacking is. We're kind of overly analytical, very science-based, like a data, you know, centric approach. Well, new age was more like sifting from this kind of analytical, rational thinking to more feminine, kind of intuitive, sort of feeling-based approach. Yeah. So in that sense, uh, two two are very different. Yeah. Um, now another similarity is both are kind of commercialized. So New Age in the beginning had a you know great atmosphere. So sort of people are trying to discover something new, but then it became all business, and you know whole idea was packed into you know like a weekend seminar where if you pay three thousand dollars you can learn to become enlightened you know that type of thing and the same thing is true with the biohacking with all the gadgets and machines and you know some of them are quite costly and you have to be pretty wealthy to be able to afford it so definitely it is a kind of a you know middle class or upper class sort of trend and not for the working class or, you know, to, for the people in the third world. So it's a very posh trend in a way. Yeah. So uh, for in, in that sense, that is similar to the new age too. Now, so talking about the gadget, right? So yeah, you need to be able to afford all the gadget. I mean, for the smartwatch, it's not so expensive, but some other, you know, gadgets are quite costly. And so you need to be wealthy. So that's one 
problem, but also by using all the gadget, you are dependent on them. So in a sense, you're not independent from the matrix. Yeah, you're kind of dependent. This whole thing can be the next matrix. Yeah, because you would need the companies to produce smartwatch and other machines because you cannot make them yourself. Yeah, if you are used to constantly, used to this culture of constantly measuring, you need all those gadgets because you cannot measure your, you know, DNA and stuff like that. I mean, in the case of DNA testing, you need to send, send your blood sample to a company and then they do the, all the calculation, but you need those companies. You cannot do it yourself. And that is true with a supplement, right? So you cannot produce supplement, yeah? Um, yeah, we, we, can, we can't produce supplement ourselves. Therefore, we have to rely on companies to make supplement. It is not something we can source locally. Yeah. Uh, as for food, regular food, like vegetables and fruit, and, and I mean, some of them you can grow yourself, and then, or at least you can buy locally from local farmers. So you know the farmers. Yeah. And then, but with all supplement companies, we don't know who, who are making all those things or how they are producing those supplements. Yeah. Uh, now, by the way, uh, about the sustainability of supplement production, uh, I made another video, so please watch it. It's called The Truth About Supplement for Health and Sustainability. Yeah. So anyway, you are dependent on, uh, you know, those companies if you are taking tons of supplement every day. Yeah. Uh, while if you, you know, go jogging, it's free. I mean, you don't need anything. Or if you have a regular diet, you don't really need any special machines or anything like that. And then if you don't measure all the time, yeah, you don't, I mean, I'm not saying you, you shouldn't measure. I mean, you can measure a little bit, but not constantly, yeah, so that you can live more independently. Now, the whole thing is part of a smart city design, right? So you continue living in this kind of a modern civilization, kind of especially you, possibly, you know, urban environment, yeah? But urban lifestyle is not healthy. Yeah, the air quality is bad and there's no greenery. You know, we cannot find a good space to go jogging and so on. So instead, you created this new culture to, you know, create your own gym, yeah? And then uh, you can even change your air quality in your room and so on. Um, in fact, I watched one video about Brian Johnson showing his, his home and then he has uh, his own gym and then the walls are covered by this uh, photograph of forest so that he feels he's exercising the forest. Maybe it has a similar, I don't know, visual a visual effect, yeah, I don't know. But then, you know, why don't you go to a forest, right? So I don't know if, of course, some people are um, difficult to leave the city. So therefore, some of those methods are just introduced for people like that. But then I don't know if, if it is sustainable to continue this kind of lifestyle, yeah? Um, so one thing is living in cities. You know, if a, a big population is continue is continuing to live in big city, is it sustainable? Yeah. The other question is, what about all those gadgets? You know, smartphones, smartwatches, and all the other gadgets. You know, how do we produce? Where are the resources? What kind of resources do we use? You know, is it sustainable to produce all those things? That is a question it's not often addressed, right? Now, instead, I propose to live in a Satoyama city, meaning the country city, yeah, where you have a good balance of convenience and nature. <clears throat> so I'm not saying... Uh, we are going back to the past or the ancient time, yeah? But just moving to the countryside with 
modern lifestyle. So you are using certain level of technology. Yeah. And in fact, uh, with the remote work, it enabled us to live anywhere. We no longer need to live in cities. So this lifestyle is possible because of the technology. So I'm not saying we should not use technology. It is okay to embrace certain level of technology, but there is you need a balance, basically. But you also want to have nature and a traditional lifestyle and have a good balance of the two. And so, therefore, it is a very futuristic lifestyle. Yeah, this kind of a endless growth, endless kind of urbanized kind of a mega city type of lifestyle isn't the only futuristic uh, lifestyle. Okay, and that also means a uh, Shizenka way, like a naturalistic way. Yeah, and this way of lifestyle has a good balance of yin and yang, good balance of feminine and masculine quality. So you can use some analytical thinking. Like I, I do value science and you know data too, but you're not dependent on that. You can also trust your intuition and your feeling. And you know, you don't need to constantly measure. There are more natural ways to measure yourself, such as you know, checking your poles or feeling your meridians, the, because each meridians are related to each organs, you can kind of check your physical condition in a natural way without using all the gadgets and you know, machines. Yeah, So you are more independent. This lifestyle, you, you can lead just by yourself. You don't need other companies to help you, right? Now, so let's look at spiritual implications on this, you know, kind of biohacking lifestyle. Yeah. For example, um, like a lifespan extension, like to extend your lifespan. What, how does it affect our spirituality? Yeah. Right. Let's say if there is a divine blueprint. Yeah, like for example, if you believe in like reincarnation and then life sort of continues, right? And then by extending your life to lifespan, how does it affect this the entire you know blueprint? Yeah, because aging can be a learning experience. Yeah, we have the infant period, then the childhood, adolescence, early adulthood, middle age, and then the senior age. We all go through different experiences, even decaying. Everything in nature decay. Yeah, they are all natural process. I mean, okay, I'm not saying becoming sick by, by uh, our unhealthy lifestyle, by eating a lot of junk food and not exercising. I'm not talking about that. But if we live naturally, it is kind of natural to decay. So aging is a natural phenomenon, right? And then there's a learning opportunity for us. There's a sort of opportunity for our spiritual growth. But if we stop aging, what, what would happen to that opportunity? Yeah, and then what would happen to the grand plan of the reincarnation? Because by living the senior life and then we grow spiritually, that can be used in the next life. That learning can be used in the next life. So it all comes down to whether you believe in life, after, you believe in afterlife or not. Yeah, life after death. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you don't believe, if you don't believe in life after death and you just, you think the life we, this life is just only one life, then that's, everything can be measured by science, but these things cannot be measured by science. So that is another thing you may want to look into. If you are especially interested in spiritual side of uh, your life. But again, this is just my opinion. So I'm not saying a blueprint and you know the biohacking lifestyle itself is a, is bad or anything like that. And uh, if you you know want to live 
like this, then yeah, of course that's your way. And you don't need to do everything. Yeah. I mean, you can just pick some of the good approaches that he is doing, and then you just, you know, decide for yourself. Right. Yeah. But if you are more interested in natural approach, please read my book, Ikigai Biohacking. It is also called Shizenha Biohacking, meaning naturalist biohacking. Yeah. So you will learn how to transform your body, mind, spirit, and planet for health and uh, better society. And also in the beginning of this book, I touch upon this question of, you know, lifespan expansion and how it affects, you know, our spirituality as well. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Hachiak Takamiya. I am the author of Ikigai Biohacking. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel. And please leave your comment. What do you think of Brian Johnson and Blueprint? And what do you think of the whole kind of biohacking or transhumanistic sort of approach? Yeah, right. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Live with you, Ikigai!